Salut à tous et bienvenue pour votre nouvel épisode du podcast The Trick Play. Aujourd'hui, épisode très très spécial, on est tous super heureux en fait, tout simplement, car euh, nous sommes en direct avec une famille et un joueur en particulier, c'est la famille Mukwamu, et avec notamment le joueur, le cornerback de South Carolina, que vous connaissez très très bien, car on parle très souvent, c'est Israël Mukwamu qui est ici. Israël, hello um... Hello. Um, so, Israel, could you tell us more about yourself? Could you introduce you uh, to uh, people that doesn't know you already? Well, yeah, my name is um, Israel Mukwamu. Um, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, here in the United States. Um, I play corner cornerback at the University of South Carolina, and um, I majored in sports management. Um, I, was, I was a junior, so I left school early. And, yeah, that's a little bit about me. Um, I have... Uh, Three brothers, uh, two beautiful parents, and a beautiful family. Cool. Nice to meet you. So uh, you talk about your family right now. Uh, could you introduce your father and your brother that works with you uh, during your, for your business? Uh, could you introduce uh, Charles and uh, Sergio, your brother, who is also your uh, business manager? Oh, yeah. Uh, my dad, Charles, my mom, uh, my mom Betty, uh, my older brother, Sergio. Um, my younger brother, right. Manny, and then my older brother, uh, Joseph. Uh, so what we're going to do is asking you a little bit of question and then asking your parents and brother uh, some other questions. So you are a 6'4", 205 pounds, I think. Uh, it's usually a wide receiver size. What made you choose to be a, a defensive back? Um... Growing up, I always played offense. Uh, I actually grew up playing uh, running back. Then uh, as I got taller, I actually started playing receiver. But um, during high school, one day, I was um, trying out for the high school football team. And uh, I, I went to go try for a receiver. But it was a lot of receivers in front of me. So I was like, I might not play. So then I looked at, at the DBs, and it wasn't a lot. So I was like, I played DB before. So I went to go um tried DB and actually my first high school game uh, I started and I caught an interception and ever since then it was just it was just God grace by just giving me the athletic abilities to play the game. Perfect uh, so you talk about high school you were not a highly recruited uh, player I mean you were three stars uh, but you were recruiting by uh, Florida Georgia you had offers to lots of uh, great schools what made you choose uh, South Carolina? Um, originally, I was uh, committed to Florida State, but um, I was going there to play for um, Jimbo Fisher, but he um, took another job. So I kind of backed up. And ever since then, um, I grew up in South Carolina. Well, I went to South Carolina in high school. I went to high school in South Carolina. So um, South Carolina always been recruiting me. And um, since uh, I didn't go to Florida State, South Carolina was always recruiting me. And I just felt comfortable going there with the coaching staff, with uh Coach T. Rob and Coach Muschamp, and they always they build a lot of DBs. They they coach a lot of good DBs, so it was just the right place and fit for me. Yeah, perfect. Um, so, can you walk us through the recruiting process you had when you were in high school? Uh, how did you go to camps? Uh, what were your contacts with the staff? Uh, could you walk us through that a little bit? So originally, um, like I said, I played high school football in South Carolina. Um, I started getting recruited around my sophomore year of high school. Um, things really picked up that uh, that summer. My first offer was actually from South Carolina. Then I played football in South Carolina again. And then I moved to Louisiana after my junior season. And things, um, my recruiting process kind of slowed down a little bit. But once I got to Louisiana, it picked back up and I just received a lot of different offers from a lot of schools. And then South Carolina was just the school for me. Cool. Uh, let's talk about South Carolina uh, a little bit. So you saw a little bit of playing time your freshman year. How did you feel about playing right away? Um, that was one thing that went into the, um, into the fact of going to South Carolina. Um, just being able to play my freshman year. Um, Coach C. Robin, Coach Mushamp, they love playing freshmen early. So I just knew when I went there, I was going to be able to play early. And thank God I did. All right, cool. Um, 
how did you so during your sophomore year you had a lot more of playing time you were basically a starter how did you handle the transition from a little bit of playing time to full-time starter um it just went by um getting reps um in practice and as my freshman year went on i started playing more and more towards the end of the season so then uh my training camp and off season was just a a big time for me so i knew that i was going to be able to have the opportunity to start so i just knew i had to work hard and and then once game time came i just had to uh perform yeah uh talking about perform uh you had a heck of a game against georgia uh your sophomore year it was yeah. that game that puts you on the radar for the nfl how did you feel about that game can you tell us more about that special uh moment for you um yeah it was a um surreal moment um you know stuff like that doesn't happen a lot and when it does you know a lot of people like to to make it seem like if you don't do that every game then you're not you're not doing your part but you know uh that game was the game that put me on the map I felt like it was more of an eye opener than anything because, you know, I played, I was playing good all year, but that game actually, you know, boosted my name and just yeah. shown people what I was capable of doing. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, and especially Jack from at the time. Yeah, you understood Jack from. He, he was <laughs> uh, three times. And so, how did you feel about getting three peaks against him, uh, even tackles or some something like that? Like, you are a great game statistically speaking, and you also get the win. So how did you how did it feel to play against such a talented team and step up your game? How did you feel about that? Um, it was actually an exciting game. It was crazy because we played at Georgia, but every time I caught an interception, like the stadium was quiet. So I kept thinking, like, did I catch it or did I not? But I mean, it was definitely fun, and the best part was uh actually getting the win because it was one of the uh, biggest wins in our school history. So. That that day was just a amazing day. I mean, yeah, it, it was it was a great win. It was basically what you built for the 2020 season with uh, with the Miss Champ and the whole South Carolina team. So, can we talk about the 2020 season for you? Um, yes, sir. Uh, so, how did you handle that particular season? Because 2020 was a little bit rough with COVID, with injuries for you, with you deciding to opt out. So. What were your mindset going to 2020? Ha, had you already thought about opting out before the season or it just went through uh, how the season was going? Um, 2020, it was just uh, just finished what I had started. I mean, finished what I had started in 2019 and uh, I was ready to come in the season and, uh, and do what I needed to do. But um, with injuries and stuff, it was kind of, It was kind of uh, disappointing, but that's the part of the game and that's what you have to do. But uh, I think I gave it my best shot. And as far as opting out, um, I got hurt again. I re-injured my groin again. So I wasn't going to be back in time for the last couple games anyway. So I just decided to opt out. All right. Uh, but by the way, is it, um, how to say, is it healed? Like, are you okay now with your groin and you're ready to go again? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, it's definitely healed back to 100%. I feel um, like I did at the beginning of the season, so I'm excited to start training. Perfect. Yeah, so talking about training, what are your next steps for the uh, NFL draft? You are likely to be a first-rounder or a second-rounder um, in the 2021 NFL draft. So what are your next steps? Going to com the combine uh, pro days, workouts. So what are your – can you walk us through that? Oh, yeah, so I'm um, – starting to train actually um, on Monday at XPE down here in uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. So we're just going to um, work on the things that the scouts want to see from me as far as running, um, opening my hips and stuff like that, and just getting ready for the combine and pro day. Cool. Um, so you were talking, we were talking about the uh, pre-draft process. Uh, are you in contact with uh, NFL players that are helping you throughout the process? Like, for example, Jevin Kinlo, who was on your team uh, last year and he was drafted. So are you in contact with him? Are you having contact with the NFL right now with former players, coaches, and et cetera? Um, yeah, some of my teammates, you know, I talk to them. My old teammates that's our, that are in the NFL now, I talk to them um, here and there, just asking them about the process and how, how, it, went, how it went for them. But um, 
everybody has a different process that they go through. Everybody drive process is different. So I'm just picking out everybody's brain and seeing what they did and stuff like that. Cool. You were talking about improving your game and uh, basically working out what the scouts uh, wants you to be. Uh, what do you think is your greatest strength on the field? Um, my greatest strengths on the field is just um, being able to cover, um, having great length and uh, having good ball skills. Yeah. I mean, right. Uh, also, you are a great tackler, right? I mean, yeah. I'm, yeah. You, we got to give you that. It, it's, it's just great. Um, and finally, what do you need to work on? Like, what is your something that you need to work on? You are not the best at, but you will be you will be improving throughout the summer. Um, probably just um, sometimes staying patient um, and locking into the game. Sometimes when you uh, when the ball is not coming your way, you kind of you kind of uh, get lost in the game and forget that you're in the game. So you just got to stay focused all the time and be ready because you never know when you're going to have to make that play. Yeah, perfect. I mean, um, th th that is great. You you're going to work on that and you're going to be great. Uh, we heard that you were releasing a new type of me merchandise, sorry. Um, so can you tell us more about that? That merchandise is supposed to be focusing on the routes for, for your, your routes to Congo and France. Can you tell us more about that? Oh, yeah. So we um, have a business called uh, Mook Enterprise. And um, our slogan is uh, whatever it takes. So basically saying um, I'm going to do whatever I need to do to Uh, be the best that I can be and uh, just provide for me and my family. So that's what it is. Cool. Um, so we cannot wait to see what you're working on and uh, we'll watch that with uh, great interest. Um, now we're going to talk about your father and brothers a little bit and then we'll come back to you with some more funnier question. I say it's, it's just else going to be easier for you. Um, Charles, you ready? Yes, I am. Monsieur Charles, Monsieur Charles Mukwamu, um, we learned that you speak French, actually. A yes, little bit. Je parle français aussi. Vous parlez français? How do you oui, like? Parfait. I'm gonna ask you a question, but you can reply in French and English as you want. Like, actually, feel comfortable with that. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, so, we know you are a world-class trainer in judo, mm -hmm. en judo pour les Français, pour, pour les Français qui nous écoutent, and uh, you are training students uh, across the globe, the world, actually. Uh, what's the name of your company, exactly? Uh, I'm going to say that uh, in French for, for to help people, French speaking, to understand. Oui, je, je suis le fondateur du judo club Kamikaze. J'ai dû entraîner beaucoup de, de étudiants au Congo. Euh, le nombre varie. Je connais même pas combien ça peut aller dans des dans de mille et quelques étudiants que j'ai étudié. Euh, et aujourd'hui, j'ai pu aider à comprendre le judo. Et aujourd'hui, ils sont entraîneurs partout dans le monde, en France, en Belgique, en Angola, au Congo. C'est partout. Oh, au Nigeria, partout. Euh, J'avais la grâce non seulement d'être un grand compétiteur, deux fois champion au Congo, plusieurs fois champion en Suisse et en Irlande, euh, c'est la capacité de transférer ce que vous connaissez. Parce que vous pouvez être un meilleur judoka, mais ne pas être capable de transférer votre connaissance. Je, je viens d'un grand club de, de judo et je suis sorti de là pour créer mon propre club, j'étais euh, euh, la seule personne qui avait la, la ceinture noire. Et commencer avec tous les autres au, au bas niveau euh, ceinture blanche. Et les amener jusqu'à la ceinture noire. Et aujourd'hui, ils sont quand même partout dans le monde. D'accord, très bien. Et euh, une question un peu plus personnelle. Euh, vous venez de, du Congo, donc... La République démocratique du Congo, de Kinshasa ou Lubumbashi plutôt Et Plutôt Kinshasa. Plutôt Kinshasa, d'accord. Et uh, how many students do you currently, uh, are you currently uh, training uh, Over here in the United States, I stopped training because I, I, I spoke, je, je, je dois répondre ça en français. 
Ici aux États-Unis, je n'entraîne pas. J'ai commencé à entraîner et puis j'ai arrêté pour raison d'études et de, de, support, de supporter ma famille. Euh, pour le moment, euh, je n'ai pas des étudiants euh, ou un club de judo ici. D'accord, très bien. Pour la dernière question, je voulais quand même que Israël comprenne. Mais uh, does it have a link that Israel tackles very well with the fact that you you're a judo trainer? Like because um, I I will say uh, the link with uh, the judo and the football what Israel do um, not directly. And directly, I can say this is a family a family. DNA, because in um, my mother's side, they used to do uh, something like a wrestling. And all of them from my ancestors, they used to be a champion. And uh, you can see uh, that DNA follow. It doesn't matter which sport you do, uh, judo or sport, anything where we need to use a physical force, this DNA is there. And that's why. You see Israel perform so great, but uh, it's not something I, I transfer because I didn't teach <laughs> my <laughs> own uh, son Jido, but I teach everybody. I didn't have a chance to train them. In Israel football is a gift from God. It was helped by Sergio, Joseph, and uh, his brother Emmanuel. They start so little. Um, I'm not a part of that. Uh, the credit come maybe for my DNA, but uh, indirectly, directly, they have nothing with Jido. Oh, you're right, but apparently it's working because finally those, your son is at the draft in a few months and just congratulations to your family, really. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's a gift from God. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur Charles. Uh, je vais passer à Sergio. I'm gonna uh, so speak in English right now. <coughs> Sergio, how are you doing? Good? I'm doing good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to speak a more business part. Like, So my first question to you, Sergio, is what is your key as a, a key role as Israel business manager? Exactly. Right. Well, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, my key role really is to make sure Israel endeavors is good, uh, make sure his business outside of football that he's making money making sure that um, I'm like the bridge to when it comes to him, speak to his agent, or if he wants to do something in business, uh, talking to the people that we need to look up to. So really I'm the bridge and all that. So I relay back information to him. He tells me what he likes, what he don't like, what he wants to do. And I'm the guy that talks with the agent and talks to everybody and say, hey, here's a wrong, this, this and that, and just figure out things. So I'm basically like his, his spokesman. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, what things surprise you the most? Like, wh what have you learned so far in this business, in this process? Um, a lot of things surprised me, especially when he was uh, getting recruited. Uh, at first, as getting recruited as a, a high school player, you, you see all the coaches calling you, <laughs> and, you know, texting you, trying to uh, get you to come visit the schools and stuff like that. Um, but now that he's going to the NFL, it's a different animal. You have agents that you never talk to. They know your phone number. They call you all types of day, anytime. And like, hey, I want to represent your brother. You know, I have, it was so bad that I got tired of answering phone calls because I had agents Enough. call me every day. So <laughs> it, that was very shocking that people have your number. You know, you, you never spoke to them. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I understand. What do, where do you see Israel's brand uh, in the oh, future? Israel's like, brand, um, like, yeah, yeah. In the future, uh, we want to be something close to like Nike, where it's not only that his brand is only working while he's playing, but he, we want his brand to be pushing even when he's done playing. Or I should say more like Jordan. See, Jordan left a legacy where even that he's not playing no more, but his shoes, his clothes are still selling. So that's the, that's how we want our brand to be pushed. Matter of fact, Israel has his brand on right now. He didn't show you. Oh. That's the first uh, collection that will be coming out. 
and the second one, uh, whatever it takes, will be coming out as well. And we have a French line that will be coming out with the French colors. We're gonna send that out to you guys as a gift soon. Oh, yes, thank sir. you. We'd love to see. We'd love to see that. Yeah. To promote it, Doctor yes, Alich, promote it. Um, yes, sir. And uh, my last question is like, so it seems to be a family business. How is it to work with your brother every day for you no know, years? Like, how is it going between together? <laughs> Um, I think the best thing is, is, is my brother. So at the end of the day, I have the best interest for my brother. It's not like, you know, if, if he wins, I win. So yeah, yeah. it's, you know, in business, yeah. some people, even though you can have a good business partner, but they always still look at, okay, what well, I'm going to win out of this. But for me is okay. If my brother win, we're all going to win. So it's a family. So I want him to win so that the whole family wins. So I'm not just working for, myself my own interest but i'm working for his interest and the whole family interest so that's the best thing about it if you if you have if you're working with family you know family members they they should be people that you trust so if you're working with your family you're always gonna you're always gonna succeed 100 percent of the time yeah i understand like we can see your family is really really close like this and yeah so, so that's the best thing ever for everyone I, like congratulations for that um i will be back on uh on israel thank you sergio okay. thank you for everything thank you <laughs> merci beaucoup israel uh we, uh i'm gonna ask you like two questions like little anecdotes so i need the i have a quote in front of me you said and it is i remember one time in third grade i had a c and my parents didn't let me play football that year like explain can you explain that? Like, how did you feel? Like, uh, how, how are you doing in school since since uh, that day? Since that happened? Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. It was, um, I believe, I was in third grade. Um, yeah, and I came home with a C. And the next football season, uh, my parents told me I couldn't play, so uh, I was disappointed. I was hurt, uh, crying and stuff. So I just made sure that it never happened again. Yeah, how how you were doing at school uh, since then? Since that C and you couldn't be playing football, uh, did you no work more, hard at school? Yeah, so uh, I've been doing good ever since. Um, since I got to college, I have had SEC on the roll um, every semester. So and now I'm on track to graduate next December. But with uh, me um, leaving school early, I'll be taking online classes. Um, even when I'm away from school. So I'm on track to graduate. So I've been keeping up with my grades and stuff like that. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. That's, yeah, yeah. Wait, I, I had a, a last question, yeah, okay. like last anecdote. Like just about the Georgia game. Once again, we speak about the Georgia game. You're the chairman of this game, but apparently on this day you were sick. You almost didn't participate uh, to this game. Did you think about not playing this game? Like how was this day? Uh, it's crazy. Uh, yeah. We know everything. Out. We know everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I woke up that game um, kind of sick. You know, I had a fever. And then, like, during the game, I don't know, I just was like, I just need to play and get over it. But, yeah, I was sick. I never thought about not playing. I was just like, I just got to go out there and do the best I can. But, yeah, it's crazy. That's how I know that I was sick that game. Yeah. And, uh, uh, you might try to get free? sick uh, often, maybe. <laughs> if you get the, 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 those kind of games yeah uh, that's just like kind of Jordan's flu game your brother was talking exactly. about Jordan that's just your flu game man uh, it's just exactly a game. Uh, we're going to move on to another part of the interview the last one and it will be um, kind of a funniest uh, funniest uh, part of the interview we'll uh, ask you a question and you only have to answer to one word for example, Guillaume is going to ask questions about who is the best quarterback you play against, and you only have to say one word. You don't need to explain. You only have to say what you think, right? If you want to explain or you hesitate, you don't have to answer the question. You can explain all the if you want. No problem with that, of course. All right, Guillaume, up to you. Okay, so uh, let's begin with uh, who's the best quarterback uh, you ever faced in uh, college? Uh, Tua Tungvaloa and... Travis Lawrence. I mean, Trevor Lawrence. Okay. Hmm. Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, the hardest uh, wide receiver to guard? Um, Devontae Smith and Jerry Judy. 
We believe you, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly Baba guys, so. Uh, the worst Madden player on your team at South Carolina. The worst. <laughs> the worst. Who's the worst? I can't think right now. Uh, who's the worst? We, we're not going to tell him, we promise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Okay, okay. Uh, who's your go-to guy at South Carolina? Just uh, mostly off the field. Uh, J.C. Horn. J.C. Horn? You are chairman uh, this pair of, of cornerbacks as well. Yeah. Oh. Um, your favorite your favorite place, your your main spot uh, on campus. On campus, uh, sorry. Zaz. It's a pizza place called Zaz in Columbia, South Carolina. Okay. Your favorite NFL team? Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> Whoever drives don't me. have one? Okay. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I know the answer to that one too, but where do you want to be drafted? Uh, whoever drives me <laughs> anywhere. Yeah. yeah. I Good answer too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, y- your best career game ever outside of uh, the, the Georgia game? It could be uh, high school, uh, kind, uh, peewee football, college football, and it's anyone. Um, it will probably be peewee football where I scored three touchdowns in one game. Mm. Okay, p- pretty good, pretty good. Your best on-field memory? My best on-field memory? Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, the Georgia game. Okay. Uh, the best uh, college football atmosphere? Uh, you played in outside of South Carolina? Mm. Best one. Uh, Texas A&M, Florida and Tennessee. Ah, the swamp, yeah. Uh, we, have to be honest with you. we have to be honest with you, Guillaume is actually a Florida fan, so that's why he's like smiling, I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I enjoyed your, your Georgia game so much. <laughs> uh, who's your role model in the NFL? Um, repeat that, please. Y- your role model in the NFL, the the player, the uh, player you wanted to be. Um, I will go with uh, Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman. Yeah, great choice. Oh, great, great choice. You're and ready. I got the last question. It's more personal. Uh, I play football in France. So, do you think you could grab me? Because I play one well <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, definitely. Definitely? Okay, okay. I mean, See I you in France then. See you in Paris. <laughs> um, all right, so um, do you want to talk about anything else? We finished the interview. Uh, we don't want to take a lot of time, uh, a lot of your time. So, do you want to talk about anything else? Um, I don't know, what's on your mind? Uh, no, I'm fine. I'm good. Uh, just, you know, just uh, be ready to, be ready for my apparel to launch uh, January 1st. All right. So that's about it. All right. Uh, you'll get some uh, other nice. friends. Don't worry. All right. Uh, yeah, appreciate that. We'll promote that in France. Uh, don't worry for, for you. We got you. Um, and thank you. During the NFL offseason, like one of the offseason, you have to come to France. That's not even oh, yeah. a question. You have to come visit. Oh, yeah, I, got, I got family in France. <laughs> All right, come so visit. just enjoy it. You will enjoy the country. Yeah. Come visit, man. Uh, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, we are over, I think. Uh, so uh, thank Merci you. Beaucoup. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank merci. You. Merci. merci. Thank you very much. Thanks to you. And merci à toute la famille. Merci beaucoup, la famille Mukwamu. Merci. Merci. Merci à vous aussi. Ah, oh, c'est gentil. Uh, and <laughs> for your uh, draft, you, you'll be, without a doubt, a great player in the NFL. Thank you. Appreciate that. Merci. In all of our mock drafts, you're never after the second round, like never ever. You're always at the top of the second round, big maximum. You, you don't go after, so believe yeah. us. Yeah. Like, we believe in you a lot since a yeah. long time. <laughs> and you, and you, you just got you. a, a huge your with this interview. interview. <laughs> you got Thank you. you got a huge bump with this interview. Don't worry. <laughs> oh yeah. Et bien voilà, c'était la grosse surprise donc dont nous vous disions euh, euh, depuis euh, quelques quelques jours maintenant 
Israël Moukouamou, donc on... bien entendu, on le suivra à la draft, hein. ça pas de souci là-dessus. On vous remercie de nous avoir écoutés, de nous avoir suivis tout au long de cette interview. À la prochaine Salut tout le monde et merci